Hey everybody, uh, I don't do this often, but um, I wanted to jump on here and just say a few words about the writer's journey, um, specifically my own journey. Uh, I have a few things that I wanted to say. Um, I guess I'm getting um, reflective as my career goes on and on, but um, so bear with me. This is probably going to be kind of long. <laughs> um, in the interest of that, you know, when they say save the best for last, um, I'm not going to do that actually, because I'm going to go in chronological order of my my achievements, and a lot of the good stuff has happened um, on books that I published. Uh, I want to say decades ago, <laughs> a long time ago. These were like my my first couple of books that I, I that I wrote. But the reason that I'm doing this is because. Um, in my reflection on my writing, I've come to the realization that uh, I probably, and I don't want this to sound like negative or anything, but I, I just feel like I don't write mainstream enough that I'm going to get to like uh, a certain level that I saw in my head. And that's okay. I'm saying right now, that's fine. And the reason that I'm doing this because is because there's other authors out there just starting out or whatever. Um, and what we do is we go online now because everything's digital and we look at our colleagues basically. Um, and we, we compare and we're like, I can't reach that. And, and, you know, myself included, I've been like, I can't do it. I don't know how many times I've said that in the past couple of days, I can't do it, which is bullshit because just ask yourself, what is it you're trying to do? You know, are you trying to reach this many followers? Followers don't sell books. Who gives a, who gives a shit about that? Um, but, you know, you have to have in your head, what is the success that you're trying to reach? So, again, the reason I'm trying, that the reason I sat down to do this video is because in my reflection of maybe I'm not going to reach a certain, you know, level that I had in my head this whole time. I was going back through my journey and I noted that there was many moments throughout that have been super cool. So I wanted to take a minute and document those, not even just, not just for me, but for authors out there who are struggling or even just starting out who are like, you know, what's the point? Because I've said that too, what's the point? Nobody's reading them. But bear with me, like I said, because this is my journey and yours might be totally different, but when you celebrate the small successes, um, it's really important. It really, it really helps you. Um, so let me, let me just dive right into it. So <clears throat> back, uh, one of the first novels that I ever published, um, I was trying to find my niche. Okay. So I liked a lot of fantasy and so forth. And so I, I was sort of leaning in that direction, but I didn't know what to do. And then I saw a documentary, um, about, female gladiators narrated by Lucy Lawless, who played Xena, we all know, on, on the television series, Xena Warrior, Warrior Princess. So I took what they said in the documentary and it eventually became <clears throat> The Crescent. Um, it's about two female gladiators from different uh, social spectrums. One's very poor, one's very rich. They both wind up inside the gladiator arena um, fighting each other. Of course, you know, that's a culmination that needs to happen. <clears throat> this was like probably the first book I published. In fact, it was. And I did it at a time when self-publishing wasn't cool yet. But I took a chance on it because I just wanted to see my stuff in print. Um, it's been through a lot of iterations. I've changed it many, many times. I'm very happy with the way it looks now. I just changed the cover. I think it's clean. I think it tells the story of what it is. But the thing about this one and why, even though maybe it's not as well received as I would have hoped, there's one thing that happened with the Crescent that um, none of my other books to date have, uh, have had this happen to. Um, it's been on the radar to be made into a feature film or TV series for a while now. But the thing about it is, um, the, my latest publisher 
or not publisher, producer, uh, what we're trying to do here for film rights, he keeps telling me it's a good story. I don't want to let it go. I mean, he keeps championing it to be this entity. So, um, you know, fingers crossed, prayer said, that's going to happen. But, I mean, even if it doesn't, like, to have eyes on it in that manner, that, like, that, that could translate to the screen. Because when I write, that's what I see. You know, it's like a, it's for me, it's like a movie in my head. And I'm, I'm trying to get that across onto the page. So for other people to, do, to see that, too, um, I think that's very, very cool. And honestly, it would, it would make a great series. I'm telling you, Amazon, what are you doing? You know, you got a bunch of remakes let's let's do something original but um that was the first thing and this is the first book that i published so again you know um don't don't give up on your backlist i guess is the lesson there okay so the next um book in my lineup uh is sort of the reason why i wanted to sit down and do this because the more that i think about it the more it blows my mind um and you're going to understand that when I start telling you this story. So, again, when I first started out, I didn't necessarily know what kind of path I wanted to take, what kind of writer I wanted to be. So I was just pulling ideas and putting them together. And at the time, uh, and I still am, but not, you know, to the, not to the degree that I was then, uh, I used to uh, be a huge wrestling fan. Uh, this was like the culmination, the, the heights of the Attitude Era and so forth. So I took my love of writing and my love of wrestling and I put them together and I created a thriller called Theater of Pain, which is basically, honestly, it's a love letter to pro wrestling, um, even though I was never involved in the business. Let me make that perfectly clear. I was just on the outside looking in. Back in those days, there was no dirt sheets, there was no social media, none of that. Uh, I I got snips of, you know, stuff from, from interviews and we used to get bootleg tapes. Those of you who knew who were in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, so I wrote this, I wanted to put like this thriller, you know, kind of storyline in this, you know, world of professional wrestling because they're already over the top. They've got characters, you know, um, it's traveling. I thought that would be interesting for the cop trying to, you know, pin down who, who killed this person. And they're always moving. So it's a moving target. The reason I'm talking about theater of pain years later from the time that I actually wrote it. So I wrote this thing. I put it out there. Um, fun fact, I, I came this close to landing a major publishing deal with it. They kept asking for chapters and so forth. They liked it a lot. I was excited. Last minute, they went with something else. And I was like, well, shit. You know, shit happens. Move on. But, again, the reason why I sat down to do this video is because you don't know what's going to happen when you put your work out there. So let's circle around uh, to now where this is starting to resurface in my life in the most amazing way possible. <laughs> so let me put this into perspective for you. Um, say you're a fan of pro wrestling um, or, you know, whatever, whatever you're a fan of right now and say that there is an athlete that you watched back in the day that truly inspired you um, and was your favorite and so on and so forth. Uh, and then <laughs> a chance meeting happens with this person and somehow you wind up having dialogue and now it's like more than just fan interaction. Um, I'm talking about if, if you're a fan of wrestling, which some of my followers are, I know you are, I'm talking about Medusa slash Alundra Blaze. I call her Medusa. That was my favorite name, but my favorite growing up, like the people, the kids watching Bianca Belair and the Charlotte Flairs now, that was me back in the day. And I'm gonna prove it <laughs> right now. This, um, if you can see with the glare there, 
So, yeah, so there. Um, I don't remember when this was taken. I do remember that it was Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, it was Alundra Blaze versus Bertha Fay. And I remember this succinctly because uh, I didn't know she was going to be there. And that's the first and only time I ever saw her live, um, Alundra Blaze. So her music hits, and I started to freak out. I was like, oh my God, Alundra Blaze is here. Um, so at the time, I had this little autograph book because I <laughs> thought I was going to get like autographs from wrestlers after the show or whatever. Um, so I start scrolling this note. Now, I don't remember what I put in it. More than likely, it's stuff that I have since said to her in person. But I scroll this note. She wins the match. Um, I race to the aisle, and I'm leaning over, and I'm trying to give her this note, and she took it. <laughs> uh, she actually took it in her hand and, and, and left. And I remember thinking, I don't care if she throws it in the trash on the way through. All I know is that she took it. She doesn't even have to read it. I don't care. I can pretend in my mind. But so, <laughs> you know, let's hold on to that nugget there for a minute and let's spin her back around the theater of pain. And let me tell you that not only do I not care if she read that note, because she actually read my book. I gave this to her. Let me get the old one up. I gave this to her um, just you know, happenstance. I no, I've given this to a lot of a lot of people. Not expecting I never expect anything. I just wanna share my gift with them because they, you know, um entertained me for so many years. So if they if they got a kick out of it, great, because it's part you know, it was, it's based on the industry, but to date, Medusa's the only one who's read it. Okay? And she didn't have to. She didn't have to at all. But not only did she read it I asked her for if she would leave me a review on it because this, I mean, it was huge for me to hear that she actually read it and liked it and related to it, okay? So, you know, spin back all the way to this, this right here. Fast forward to, she read my work. She liked my work. Now I asked her for a review, not thinking she would do it. And I'm gonna tell you why, because like I said, I gave the book to a lot of people, and not even just that book, a lot of other books I've given out. I've given, I've given out Theater of Pain a lot um, to people in the industry, and I, I kid you not, there was a women's tag team who looked at this like they didn't know what a book was. Um, but again, I never expect anything, you know? If you wanna, again, it goes back to the, the note thing. If you're, I, I mean, I hope they don't throw the books in the trash, but, I don't expect anything from it. And when I asked Medusa if she would do a review for it, I didn't think she would even say yes. Not only did she say yes, she wrote it immediately. So now I've re repackaged this. I think it looks super clean. I've gotten, I've gotten a lot better at doing my cover work, I think. But now, and I hope, I, th I think she'll be okay with this because you know, she gave me the okay to do the, the, uh, the quote, but now it's on the front of the frickin' book, okay? That's huge for me because that, she signed it, this is how she sent it to me. Yeah, I correspond with Medusa now, which is frickin' nuts. She put WWE Hall of Famer. Now that's on my book about wrestling. I don't think she even knows how massive that is because it, that is huge for me to have that on my book, in my book. Uh, for her to tell me it's an honor, whoa, <laughs> okay? That blows me away. That's huge. What's even bigger than that, and this is why I, I wanna tell you, keep writing, you never know what, what doors it's gonna open. The reason this stuff is opening is because, not even because of these. Uh, I, when I did Vegas Vigilantes, I dedicated one of those books in the series, uh, the Vegas Valkyries one, second one, I dedicated it to Medusa, okay? Brought this to one of her signings, handed it to her. 
uh, showed her the inscription there, and that started a whole thing with us. Um, again, I didn't expect anything from that. I would. I don't want to say it's not. It's a not a big deal for me to dedicate my books to people, but I do. I do a lot of put a lot of thought into it. You're not getting into that book unless you mean something to me. Uh, I've since stopped doing it because I've run out of people. To be perfectly honest with you, I started dedicating it to myself. Um, but Medusa was one of those people that I absolutely that's dedicated to her. That's about Valkyries. She's a she's a freaking Valkyrie on Earth. But that brings me to my next point. So not now, not only does Theater of Pain have her rousing endorsement on it, which again, he so much for that. But <clears throat> this is Medusa's book, okay? It's a, her autobiography, the first one she's put out, The Woman Who Would Be King, um, available now. Uh, great read, I recommend it to anybody. Not even, I mean, even if you're not a wrestling fan, it's an inspiring story. She's a, a class act, this woman. And this is why I'm telling you this story also, because because uh, I have to. And I know she doesn't like accolades. <laughs> I re I, she really doesn't. She always shuts me up. But, um, but yeah, pick this up. Um, and if you do, <laughs> and you happen to know who I am, this is also blows my mind, okay? It probably doesn't mean a lot to, uh, you know, the, the quotes on here. I don't know if that, if a lot of people, you know, they just write it, whatever. But let me circle back to this again. Circle whatever year this was, I don't remember. But uh, she asked me to review her book. And and my my review's in her book. Right there, that's me. That's me right there. Uh, review. <clears throat> so, and you know, even even bigger than me actually being in this, um, she, she sent me this herself, uh, and it's personalized inside. Uh, I'm not gonna show it to you because it's personal, but um, to get something like that from one of your heroes is actually, ex it's extra special and um, yeah, I, I, I'm just so blown away by the whole experience. And the writing life is even crazier. So you don't know, like, where these doors are going to open or what, what's going what's gonna to come from doing what you're doing. Uh, maybe you're frustrated because nothing seems to be happening. But like I said, the Theater of Pain and The Crescent one and two and these were oh god i didn't even remember decades old books that i wrote um when i first, was first starting out and they're still you know stuff's still happening with them which leads me to you know my other books because more more great things when i was tallying the score here um i was going down and one of my favorites, the Demon Hunter Saga. This is one of my favorites because it's very dark and bloody. And I used to bring this uh, when it was when it first came out. I used to bring this to conventions a lot. And um, talking about reviews, the reviews I got on this not only did it get nominated for best series, that was my first nomination ever. Not only that, but if you can see on the back here, um, yeah, I, I was compared to the Priest of the Blood series from Doug Clegg, the Odyssey and Gulliver's Travels, and then one of my favorite ones, which literally when I got this uh, review, quick, let me find it quickly. Uh, I When I heard this, um, I... I could freaking die happy when I heard this. So uh, he um, he says, uh, Vespia's Demon Hunter, the Chosen One, turned out to be more like a classic retelling of Conan with a bit of Doug Clegg's Priest of the Blood series thrown in. Conan. <laughs> Robert E. Howard's Conan. There's a huge painting of it back there. Um, to be compared 
to Conan, I'm done. You know, that, I'm done. What else do I have to do? But obviously I'm not done because I'm still writing. But yeah, so this Hunter series, yeah, so Conan, the Odyssey, Gulliver's Travels, another one. Um, your writing reminded me of Stephen King's uh, last book. Stephen King. So, like I said, uh, or like I've said many times, reviews are so important because not only does it juice the algorithm because everything's digital and paint by numbers now, and it's a, unfortunately, it's a popularity contest. It, it's not so much about the book itself. Um, you have to massage all the little parts of it. But not only, not only that, but when authors get reviews like that, or I get a review from a bona fide wrestling legend, um, it, it tells me I must be doing something right for, you know, and this is why, again, why I was doing this video when I was going back over it, I started to think I'm not at this particular level that I set for myself but I must be doing something right because of all these little things and not even little not to me these are some of this stuff's huge to be compared to Conan uh this was one of my like first full-on fantasies and I got compared to Conan so if you don't take small victories along the way uh and you're not celebrating them, it's really going to start to, you're going to start to slog through and be like, why? Why continue? Why did you even give this to me? Um, so this is, this is what this whole thing is about. And, um, I have one more, two more stories. If you're still with me, bear with me a, a little bit longer. Um, when I was doing the rounds with this and, um, Demon Huntress, which was the spinoff for it. I was at a convention in Reno. And this, I'm doing, you know, signings, whatever, having a good time. I usually just go there to have a good time, get, you know, sell some books, talk to people, because writing's a very isolating career. Um, but this, I see this girl, like, off to the side, trying to approach my table. And she's kind of, like, shaking a little bit. And she looks scared. So what turns out to be her boyfriend comes up to me and he goes, you're her favorite author. I kid you not, I looked like that. I looked behind me and I was like, who is? And she, they were like, no, you are. I was like thinking to myself, they have the wrong Cynthia. There must be another. And lo and behold, I was this girl's favorite author. And she was so nervous to, to meet me. It takes me back, you know, to meeting pro wrestlers or whoever actors at the time. And I always thought to myself, if I was in that kind of position ever, I know how the people who treated me a certain way, how they made me feel good and bad. So I was never going to do be one of those people on the bad side. So I made sure to get up from my table, come out, take pictures, talk to her, uh, it was not just a thrilling moment for her, but it's something that I've remembered this whole time. I have lost track of her since. I don't, I hope she's still reading, even if it's not my, my work, but, um, I, that was a moment in time that was just incredible. Um, and speaking of conventions, uh, this brings me to my last story and why I like to go out and do signings, like I said, because um, I'll compare it to when an actor does a film or they do a play, okay? So publishing a book um, and you sell it online and so forth, it's sort of like putting out a movie. You got to wait for the reviews and wait for the feedback. When an actor does a play, they get immediate gratification because um, the audience is right there. So they can feed off of that, you know, applause or whatever, the reaction. It's sort of the same thing when I go and I do signings because um, not only does it juice me to just talk about 
writing and fantasy and stuff like that with people. I engage in a dialogue, but more often than not, because it's usually a three day stint at these things, they'll buy the book, whatever book they bought, and then they'll come back uh, the next day and want to talk to me about it. And one gentleman, I remember this quite clearly, it's a Lucky Sevens, um, it's book one in the Vegas uh, Vigilantes trilogy, and it's actually, uh, don't tell the other books, but it's my favorite, because uh, it's, a, it's a love letter to my hometown, Las Vegas, Sin City, baby, it's my, my city. Um, but it also has a lot of stories that um, my father used to tell me growing up because he was an entertainer on the strip for like 20 years. So um, a lot of stories in here also. But I had a guy buy this book. He came back the next day and I honestly think he was like searching for me to, to tell me this. And he goes, I started this book and I absolutely love it. And he quoted a line back to me from it. And it, the line, I don't know it off the top of my head, I, I, my own line, but the, the line is something along the lines of, uh, uh, love can be found anywhere, even upside down on a pole. <laughs> uh, what that means is the love interest in this is a stripper. Yeah, you got it. It's Vegas, baby. So um, that... And also, you know, I've had, I've had readers tell me back what they saw in their head when they were reading, and it matches word for word what I was thinking when I put it on the paper, which tells me I'm doing my job as a writer, and I'm like, fucking cool, man. You know, like I said, I must be doing something right to get these things um, happening. Um, so... Stuff like that is what keeps me going, regardless of, uh, you know, the pinnacles that I set for myself. Yeah, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't, but I'm trying to focus now on um, just writing, you know? Writing so I can enjoy it, so readers can enjoy it. I love this quote in the film, Catch and Release, uh, with Jennifer Garner and Timothy Oliphant. He's, uh, he's a photographer and he says, uh, I used to take pictures all the time. She goes, why did you stop? And he says, I started getting paid for it. Took all the fun out of it. So that's kind of, you know, us writers. Now we have to do everything. Uh, we have to do marketing. We're our own social media managers. Um, we have to go out and do speaking. Oh, we have to do everything. And if you're like me, I literally do everything by myself, I'm a one woman show, it's exhausting. Um, sometimes you're like, I can't even get to my writing because I'm doing all this other stuff. Uh, boundaries, you know, make time to do the writing because you wanna do the writing and make sure you enjoy it, you know? It's supposed to be fun. If you're just chasing the dollar, go sell cars or houses or something, there's an easier way. I don't like when people bastardize the craft because they wanna make a dollar. If you don't love writing, go do something else. Um, because eventually that, that's going to fade. You can't just keep churning out nonsense books and like keep, keep a reader base. You just can't do it. Which leaves me to my final thought. Um, I love the story of Chuck Palniak, the author of Fight Club. And this is what's been ingrained in my head for a long, well, maybe not a long time, but lately, as I reflect on my work and I realize I'm, I'm very niche. Uh, I, I'm not going to fit into the popular boxes, and I'm not that kind of person. I never have been and never will be. But neither was Chuck. Chuck wrote for a long time trying to write to market, as they say, and he got rejected over and over again. And he finally just said, fuck it. I'm going to write whatever I want. S screw tradition, screw the rules. And Fight Club was born from that. And now it's everywhere. Everyone knows the first rule of Fight Club. You don't talk about it, right? I'm talking about it because it's sort of my guidepost right now on what I'm trying to write and why. And also, you know, as we went down... This history of mine 
Uh, those reasons, also. So, to those of you who leave reviews, who've left, you know, nice comments, to Medusa, I love you like a sister. You're so fucking awesome. You, you don't even know. Um, but, yeah. Just gonna keep on writing until the, the pen goes dry, I guess. I've tried to quit. I really have. I, I, I thought I was done. And the powers that be tell me I'm not. So I'll just keep writing until I can do it no longer. And I hope, I really hope you keep coming on this journey with me. So thank you so much.